Hey friendlies, it's Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. Still boondocking in Tennessee and I gotta tell you, I think I'm really starting to get the hang of it. I might do a separate video just on how to boondock on the East Coast because I've really learned a lot in the couple of months that I've just been wandering aimlessly, <laughs> wandering around. I have actually been boondocking eh, maybe 80% of the time, not quite as much as in the West, but uh, you know, I'm still learning the ropes here and uh, I'm getting better every day. This spot, I stumbled upon a couple weeks ago when I was in the area, just driving around. I'm on the edge of a national, of Cherokee National Forest. And there was zero cell signal, so I was off the grid. And when I came out one day to try to find a cell signal so that I could load some videos and get a little work done, I came down to this area and it's a paved road and it goes to some historical markers of Native American history in the area. And I actually shot a video down there and I said, I bet I can boondock here. This is a place I might try to get away with boondocking, at least for a night. And I, came I just was driving around exploring. There was a gravel road that was had a had an arm on it, but it was open. And I went up and, and explored there and found this cemetery behind me, which is now the home to a Civil War veteran, which is kind of interesting, fascinating piece of history, Confederate States of America. Can you see that? Second Regiment, SC Inf, I guess that would be South Carolina maybe, Infantry, Confederate States of America, born in 39, died in 1900. Charles Jones, and this whole graveyard is, or that stone at least, is in his memory. And this seems to be the Jones family, mostly. Probably his family died after fighting for the Confederate States. Not a bad view for eternity, right? <laughs> and I, I stumbled upon this and I was like, wow, this is really pretty. But there's cornfields down there and everything. So I assumed it was probably private property. The graveyard is marked private property, but nothing else is. This time, coming back and revisiting the area, when I was driving in, I happened to notice a wildlife management area. And that has been really my luck experience here in Tennessee. There's a lot of wildlife management areas and they kind of don't care. Well, that's not true. Um, there are rules, at least like in Catoosa up near Crossville. Uh, there were rules about you couldn't go inside the wildlife management at night. It was closed. Uh, you could camp outside, though, but they weren't real strict about how long you could be there. And this one has no signs. Nothing about camping, nothing about no trespassing or anything like that. And yesterday, I came out of the Sitico Creek Cherokee Forest just to come up here for a couple hours and get some videos loaded because I've been off the grid for a few days and work and the day just kind of got away from me and I ended up being here all day and I thought oh what the heck we'll see if I can get away with spending the night here. I think three cars went by oh and here comes a dog of course I'm filming oh my god somebody on a horse and dogs I can't believe it every time I film. I'm going to start showing you this and prove to you that every time I turn on the camera, somebody shows up. It's amazing. He's just going hunting. Hunting season has started here for small game. Uh, deer season, I think, is uh, at the end of October. No, the end of September. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, the day got away from me here, and I ended up spending the night. A local came by yesterday, and I said, just, you know, it's always nice to check with the locals. Um, if they're not surprised to see me here, then I usually think I'm pretty safe, and I asked him, uh, so this is, just want to make sure I'm not on private property, this is public land, right? He's like, oh yeah, and I said, you think I'll be alright here for the night? And he's like, oh yeah, some coon hunters might show up <laughs> in the middle of the night, but you'll be fine. 
And he was right. A uh, really nice, quiet, comfortable place to spend the night. It's beautiful. I had lakefront views for breakfast this morning and had the Joneses here to keep me company all night. <laughs> and uh, just another wonderful boom knocking spot. I'm tempted to stay, but I really need to go get my mail. So I think I'm gonna move on. And uh, maybe come back here. I don't know, I'm finding it, I've been in a general area for a while now and I'm finding I'm comfortable here. I've found a lot of great boondocking spots and, um, you know, so it's kind of hard to leave the safety and comfort of what I found for something new and unknown, especially knowing how challenging it is to find good places on the East Coast. But I think it's time to move on. I've been in this area for quite a while now and uh, I think it's time to move on and see new things. So that's it. This is my camp. Beautiful area. Friendly locals. Can't beat it. A lot of history. We're going to go down and check out a, a Native American memorial now that the local told me about that I missed last time. Um, it's out of pass. So we'll go check that out. And we'll say goodbye to another camp. Oh, and by the way, one thing I forgot to mention. This is all really old. This is all old Cherokee land. This is where the Cherokee lived. And uh, there are memorials and monuments and things down there. And uh, it's just kind of neat to sit here by myself in the quiet and just imagine what life was like before the Europeans came and how peaceful it was and how they got to live close to nature and um, really have a lot of respect for the earth. So the Jones family we just looked at arrived here in what, the mid-1800s or, well, I don't know that they arrived here, but born in the mid-1800s, died on what used to be Cherokee Nation land. So the Joneses were part of the swiping of land from Cherokee. Tanasi, capital of the Cherokee Nation, 1721 to 1730, origin of the name for the state of Tennessee. Oh my gosh, origin of the name Tanasi. Oh, Tanasi, Tennessee. Huh, wow. The site of the former town of Tanasi, now underwater, is located about 300 yards west of this marker. Tanasi attained political prominence in 1721 when its civil chief was elected the first emperor of the Cherokee Nation. About the same town, same time, the town na name was also applied to the river on which it was located. During the mid-18th century, Tanasi became overshadowed and eventually absorbed by the adjacent town of Chota, which was to the immediate north. The first recorded spelling of Tennessee as it is today occurred on oh, Lieutenant Henry Timberlake's map of 1762. In 1796, the name Tennessee was selected from among several as most appropriate for the nation's 16th state, therefore symbolized by this monument. Those who reside in this beautiful state are forever linked to its Cherokee heritage. So I'm thinking west is almost straight ahead, so 300 yards west was the town, and it's been flooded. Tennessee, Tennessee. Look at that, I learned something today. Okay, I don't know where my dog is.
I knew I should have left him in. There he is. <laughs> Capone. He likes to explore just like me. Nice area. Oh, can you imagine? I think I might come through in the fall. It'll be beautiful. Thanks for hanging with me today. It was a lot of fun. Stay tuned. In the next video, I visit an unmarked, hidden Native American Cherokee Memorial and find a lot of cool stuff and have some uh, ref moments of reflection and uh, some commentary about the past, the present, um, and the future. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to be in the know, make sure you subscribe here to be notified when that video and many more videos come out. Until next time, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you next time.